sold our bodies to medical science. Not, in, not, in, not, not in that way. Not in that way, definitely not in that we way. We were talking, kind of going, what the hell did he pay or get paid £800 to do? What, what was it? You were taking tablets? So we, we were based in um, Panath, just outside of Cardiff, yeah. living in Tom's parents' attic. And we had no money whatsoever. And there were no, we didn't know what an angel was or a VC. Uh, no one really knew much about the internet. Our bank manager didn't know what we were up to. Um, and we had to get creative to raise money. And yeah. we saw this advert saying, looking for volunteers to uh, take part in a new anti-migraine drug. So we anti-migraine? Anti so we were injected 36 times, I think, over a week after taking this drug to see what would happen to us. <laughs> I'm sure Romy told you this is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a long night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Behind the Curtain in association with WeWork. So what is Behind the Curtain? Behind the Curtain is a secret chat show where nobody knows literally who's standing behind this curtain right now until we bring them up on stage. This is the third one we've done. Yep. Or doing. Number three. We're going to be doing another seven. We're going to be doing them across London. Dublin and Manchester. Absolutely, and the vibe of these shows wouldn't be the same without a fantastic studio audience. So thank you so much for coming, guys. <laughs> also, also, we could not do this without sponsors. So we'd like to thank Jobio, Smith and Williamson, and of course, <laughs> and of course, Oracle NetSuite as well. So thank Woo, you, big guys. Round of applause, guys. <laughs> All right. So the real reason everybody's here. So who is behind the curtain? Does anyone have any idea who might be behind the curtain? Yeah. No, nobody. None. We put out okay. two clues. We put out a few clues, but two successful clues. We're getting better, all right? Yeah. People actually guessed correctly this time for the first time ever. So my first clue I put out was that it was a BAFTA award-winning entrepreneur. My clue was that she was also a BAFTA award-winning entrepreneur. You just stole my clue. I know. You just stole. Any guesses? BAFTA award-winning entrepreneur? Still none. Elaine Page. Elaine Page, Roberta. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. Oh, well, that's right. Maybe one's right. Maybe okay, one's so right. Who's, who's behind the curtain? Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Acton Smith and Roberta Luca. Big round of applause. <laughs> Come on in, guys. <laughs> Up on stage. So, oh. thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. You, you guys have actually yeah, been downstairs for literally so nice. an hour yeah. waiting. Yes. Some people yeah. have called it a holding pen in previous episodes, but I don't know if that's how we should market it or not, yeah. is it? Holding pen for entrepreneurs. But how was your London Tech Week? Very good. I have been to Germany. Okay. <laughs> uh, to see a bit, and then I came back yesterday, went to Founders Forum, uh, and went to the COGX in the beginning of the, the week as well. So, yeah. so you avoided yeah. the London Tech Week madness for a couple of days? Yes, it is. We, we saw you were riding a mechanical bull. No, it was a, uh, a mechanical unicorn. Unicorn. Jesus, get it right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, is that what the horn was? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Okay. Ollie Barrett's crazy idea to get a few entrepreneurs riding a, a unicorn for as long as they could. Okay. It was very surreal. We were watching that video going, I hope he doesn't break his leg because no. then he may not come. <laughs> <laughs> I lasted 21 seconds, which uh, put me in last place, which wasn't good. A bit embarrassing. A lot longer than others. Yes. A lot longer than this. In what way? You. <laughs> we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't even okay. get on it. <laughs> Couldn't even get on it. So, Roberta. You boss the studios, boss the series, right? Yeah. So, previous to boss the studios, you worked for Virtue, yeah. Product marketing and Virtue. How do you go from working in product marketing and Virtue to founding boss the studios? How does how does that happen? So but you're living I, the dream, right? I'm living a dream exactly. <laughs> like got out of the large organizations. Like get me out of this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I worked in TV broadcaster uh, back in Brazil, mm, yeah. and uh, so I worked in very large corporations a lot of years of my life. Mm. And but I was also always the kind of the rebel, the nagging one, the one that people kind of didn't like much because it was like, but why don't we do this? But the world is moving on, and we're doing the same thing over and over again. Mm, yeah. And so to me, it was like a good a good chance to have two friends who have been creating games since ages. And they said, uh, we're creating a games company that is a development and publishing all inside. And do you want to come along and look after everything publishing of the game? So growth and marketing and you know everything that is not making the games itself. So I jumped. You, you had said that uh, your games go viral due to your ingenious growth strategy. <laughs> Right. You, that's actually a quote you <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going to have really? to tell us what the ingenious yeah, what, growth what is strategy is. Uh, well, my team's ingenious growth strategies. They, they, they're good at that. So, uh, okay, the first one that went viral is Surgeon Simulator. Mm. Yeah. So Surgeon Simulator is this awkward, weird game that you, 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 have a, you operate a hand 
that is very clumsy and the hand needs to do a heart transplant. That's uh, it. That's what the game is? Easy, yeah, okay. easy. And uh, a lot of YouTubers picked up mm. and it went massively viral. So at the time, uh, PewDiePie was very much in the beginning of his growth uh, and a lot of other games, gamers doing Let's Play on YouTube. And so, yeah, so we do, we, we do a lot of influencing marketing, so to say. You, you recently raised, what, 10 million? 10 million, yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, it was September last year. And was that the first round of funding? Second. Second. So what did you raise before that? One and a half million. One and a half million. So what are you yeah. doing with the with the ten million? Because <laughs> you, you don't nothing. pay you don't pay for the you don't pay for <laughs> nothing. You don't pay for the influencer marketing, do you? No, but we pay to make games, right? Mm. Mm. So and it's it's quite a, yeah it's quite a task to make a game and you know you have artists and you have developers and you have you know a lot of people involved in the creative process. But well, we, we, we had a very, very interesting journey because in the beginning of Boston, we actually uh, got partially acquired by Shine Group, which, okay. is, uh, which uh, used to, at the end, ended up belonging to News Corporation and then belonged to uh, Endemol and et cetera. Yeah. We uh, bought it back, me and my co-founders, and then ran the, the company just on our own for a while and then raised the, the first seed round. So we have been in the market nice. for a while. Busy ever since. Yeah. Michael, um, you're probably most famous for Mind Candy, Firebox, Cam. Going back to, to Firebox, right? You were, were you in college when you started that? Uh, just after we left, me and my buddy Tom Borman. Just after? So, okay. Yeah. We wanted to be investment bankers, or I did. Okay. I watched I watched Wall Street and I thought it sounded like the most glamorous job. <laughs> That's in the, the best whole world. job ever. Yeah. I'm taking it. That was Wall Street one. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the yeah. world of Wall Street. <laughs> and um, yeah, and worked in the city for a little bit and realized that was definitely not for me. And okay. so then we set up a uh, uh, e-commerce company in '98 yeah. when no one knew what the internet was. That was. It was uh, only about. So we were saying this. Graham was ten. I was ten. We we're doing <laughs> yeah. the research going '98, trying to put it in perspective. Going, oh, I was ten. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, I was, I was, yeah, tiny bit older. Not much, <laughs> not much, only a little. Yeah. You had raised, um, what was it, 800 pounds doing a medical experiment. Yes. You know, where you pretty much sold your body, right? We sold our bodies to medical science. Not, to, in, to not, not, not in that way. Not, we, not we, in we that were, way, definitely not in that we way. We were talking, kind of going, what the hell did he pay or get paid 800 pounds to do? What, what was it? You were taking tablets? So we, we were based in um, Panath, just outside of Cardiff, yeah. living in Tom's parents' attic. And we had no money whatsoever, and there were no, we didn't know what an angel was or a VC. Uh, no one really knew much about the internet. Our bank manager didn't know what we were up to. Um, and we had to get creative to raise money. And yeah. we saw this advert saying, looking for volunteers to uh, take part in a new anti-migraine drug. So we anti-migraine? Anti so we were injected 36 times, I think, over a week after taking this drug to see what would happen to us. And we survived. And, uh, any side effects? Like, yeah, any, any extra, yeah, any yeah, extra yeah, yeah, ears yeah, on yeah, your back? Or? I, <laughs> I don't couple think of there migraines, side couple of months later. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't a control. So, you know, mm. who knows? I, the, the other Michael that didn't do that could have been very different. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and my mum was so impressed that we did this and was serious about our business that mm. she gave us a thousand pounds. So, so you'd 18... stop doing medical experiments? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please stop. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we had eight, 1,800 quid, which we thought was the most money we'd ever heard of. And we yeah. bought a printer, a computer, bought a bit of stock, and we were underway. That was probably all your money spent back then on that a printer. That was pretty much, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you changed the name from, from Hotbox to Firebox. God, you guys have done your research. Yeah. yeah. So only because yeah. we know what a Hotbox is. Yeah, so you we're know. like, is that? Oh, you do. Oh, the, yeah, the crowd knows. You look, you look yeah, like yeah, you yeah. Yeah. Has anyone been to Hotbox.com? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, <laughs> so for those that haven't, Hotbox.com uh, back in the day was the, one of the world's largest porn sites. Uh, oh, we actually yeah. we were thinking oh, something else. Uh, some red faces yeah. in the crowd now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and we, we called our company Hotbox.co.uk. We didn't okay. think it mattered that Hotbox.com was out there. And we get all this traffic, but it didn't convert very well. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I came mom. looking for porn yeah, and I got exactly. chess pieces. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and my mum was so proud that her son was uh, running a business. She'd tell all her friends to go and check out Hotbox. Uh, my oh, son was no amazing oh, new God. business. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she wasn't invited to coffee mornings in Marley for, <laughs> for a while. What was it like, honestly, like back in 1998, like um, I was out of school a year kind of shows my age compared to Graham, you know. Little did I know a 10-year-old was going to be a business yeah. partner of mine. But um, <laughs> what was it like actually setting up an e-commerce site in 98? Crazy. Because th there yeah. mustn't have been many. No, there, there really wasn't. Um, I think 
yeah, we didn't really know what we were doing. There was no yeah. Shopify, there was no um, tools to do anything. We, yeah. Tom, my business partner, basically built the website, built all the um, infrastructure behind the scenes. We couldn't figure out how to take um, credit cards online. Yeah. So we had to print out an order form. <laughs> this is really showing the, my yeah. age. Print out the order form, write in your credit card details and your address, uh, and then fax it to us. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then I would sit at night, oh we, had a, we had a PDQ <laughs> machine, and I would type in the fax details of the orders, uh, and, uh, and then we'd, we'd ship them out. It was very scalable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but we had about one order a week, so it was fine. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's all you can manage. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it yeah. went from one order a week to a shit ton more than one order a week because yeah. of a, a, a shot glass chess set. Yes. Right? Yeah. How drunk were you when you came up with that one? Very, very okay. sick. <laughs> so we were in um, Cardiff uh, University student bar and we were lining up tequila shots across the bar. Mm. And Tom and I, uh, in our adult state, thought they looked like. Um, pawns on a chessboard. There were eight of them. Not all for us. We were we had some friends out. Porns. And, um, sorry? Porns. No, porn. P -A <laughs> no, I know. P -A -W. It's the sorry, there's, there's it's a the theme. Yeah. theme. Sorry. Um, and uh, we thought, wouldn't it be amazing to make chess a bit sexier and cooler and more exciting by combining it with alcohol? So we, uh, we found some chess pieces, um, or we found some drinking glasses, filled them with alcohol. Okay. Uh, whiskey against uh, gin and then you move them around the board and every time you capture a piece, you have to drink it. So it's the thinking person's drinking game. The better you're doing, the more drunk you're getting. Nice. And then uh, you just don't remember what's going on but halfway you, through. You, you were like the 13th fastest growing privately owned company in 2003 in the UK. Yes. Jeez, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Like yeah. the 13th I'm fastest. You memorized that. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. well, well, it was a long, well, a long well, time ago. 50, is that 15 years? 2003, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, what, what age? Oh, I don't want to show the ages here, but what age were you in 2003? Uh, oh, uh, early 30s, something like that. Like, the only reason we no, ask is because. Late 20s. Like, you, you would start. 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah. yeah. 15. <laughs> 10, maybe 11. Just leaving yeah, yeah. school. Um, no, but, like, did you lose the run of yourself back then? Because you went from making one, well, due to the fax machine, one sale a week <laughs> yeah. to. To how many? What was the, the, the best you were doing in a month? Oh, we were doing, um, yeah, no, it was millions of pounds a month. Uh, a month? When, yeah. At that age? Uh, maybe not millions a month, but at Christmas time it was, okay. it was that kind of level. And, yeah. and did you lose the run of yourself in any way? Did you kind I'd of go... I lose my mind at yeah, that age. Yeah, brain would have bought different pants, you know? But <laughs> were true. you buying... Cr sorry. <laughs> Nicer pants, maybe. Yeah. But were you buying crazy cars? Were you were you out drinking? No, we were you shot glass with chess. We probably should have been, but I think we were too sensible. We were just okay. head focused on the business, kind of uh, still building and growing, and yeah, um, still still maybe a bit too sensible. Okay, too okay. sensible. Yeah, R Roberta, you started Wonderlock in in 2013. I did. Okay, and that was 3D printing jewelry. Yeah, exactly. I see the. Yeah. The lightning bolt, very, very cool. Lightning. Did you print that, that one? No, I didn't print that one. <laughs> okay. so, this one was printed. So, was that actually printed? Cool yes. Can I see that? That's pretty cool. Um, so, in right, 20... Right, now he's going to wear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, in, 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 20, nice. in 2013, you started I, I that company. I stopped at an airport saying, what are you wearing? So, it's just jewelry. It's, yeah, like, it's cool, I printed yeah. it. It is, I like it. So, when you started the company, tell us a bit about the thought process about starting a 3D printed jewelry company. And 2013 is quite early. Yeah. yeah. So, I... I went through a process that I, at some point I started to dig into the fashion industry a lot to mm. understand uh, the whole value chain. And I, I'm very much into fashion, so I, I appreciate you know, beautiful things in life and etc. And to me it was like I understood how much wasteful the whole chain is mm. in terms yeah. of overproduction. So everything that you see in the stores, right, typically 50% of those clothing and accessories, they end up either on the landfills or, you know, somewhere in a, in a warehouse, somewhere in China, right? Okay. So, uh, so it was like, what if there, is a, there was a technology and the time 3D printing was kind of up and coming that would actually allow people to only have uh, uh, products upon ordering. Mm. So basically, large scale made on demand. And, and so I kind of aligned the two things and said, okay, not ready, the 3D printing is not ready yet for garments because mm. it cannot warm you up, okay. uh, but I will start with accessories, then I'm going to go into shoes, and then I'm going to go into garments, etc, etc. So that was the thinking process. Uh, it was too early. I think timing was not right. We had, uh, you know, we got featured by all sorts of, you know, 
BBC, The Guardian, everyone featured yeah. us you got a lot everywhere. Of yeah, a yeah. lot of publicity. Mm. We had a partnership with Disney, we had partnership with Topshop and etc. But still, the margins were not enough to sustain the business to grow. Did you leave uh, Bossa Studios to do that? Because we, so, we, we, yeah. we were looking at your LinkedIn <laughs> profile, you know, and it was showing that you were in Bossa Studios, then you went there and then you went back yeah. to Bossa Studios. So did you leave? So in the beginning, I didn't leave. So I said to myself, I'm Wonder Woman, right? I can't do a lot of things at the same time. Mm, okay. and, uh, and I did. And I did the two companies at the same time. And I kept my commitment with the two of them. And I burned out. So okay. at the end of the, the 2014, I was like, damn it, what, have I, what am I doing in my life? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then I said to the guys at Boss, I said, I need to look after this for a moment, see where it's going to take me. Yeah. And then, you know, I have really nice co-founders, so they understood that I needed to fly a little bit and then return. How, how did you know you were burnt out? So I got to a point that I was uh, basically I couldn't sleep anymore properly. Right. Right. I was highly irritable. I was like very, my creativity went to nothing. Everything was very much kind of triggering me to to be angry with everything okay and i'm not i'm usually very high energy smiling to everyone and i was like i i cannot recognize myself that's that's pretty bad how and long were you in that space for in that bad space about four months okay all right yeah. not sleeping so, for four months not sleeping properly yeah not sleeping properly for four months and yeah. obviously doing all sorts of things taking you know all, all, all sorts of advice to to change that yeah. And when it got really bad, it was uh, when I started to have almost kind of panic attacks. Really? So I was like, Jeez. ugh. And, uh, and then I said, okay, I need to stop that. So I went to yeah, therapy, yeah. etc. And then I said, now I'm going to, I know what is my trigger. I'm going to change my lifestyle. And I, Just out of curiosity, what level was the company at when you did that? Because a lot of startups and entrepreneurs don't realize when they're getting burnt out, they keep going, they yeah. think it's normal. You know, a lot of them like work on their own. They don't know who to talk to. Uh, like, and also, if they're in so deep and a company's at a big level, they won't kind of go, well, I've just raised money. I can't yeah. let the, yeah. the funders down. W where were you? So um, I had raised half a million for Wonderlook. Okay. So okay. I had a board with investors and et cetera and a team. Yeah. Uh, Bossa was, at the time, I don't remember what was the, the stage where we were. Uh, we were doing very well. We were kind of, you know, continuously mm. growing. And um, yeah, so it, it was tough, but I, I don't know, it, it's, it's very difficult for me to talk about it. I, I usually don't talk about it, so you guys are yeah, very yeah, good with yeah. your questions. And, right? we, and we got it on camera. <laughs> right, yeah. they, got, they got something well, from me that I yeah. don't talk about. Of course, like we do, um, try and but, do the research. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but the thing is, it, it's, uh, it, it's about understanding yourself. Yeah. Mm. It's about self-discovery, it's about kind of going deep and say, okay, what are my triggers? What am I doing that actually is affecting my, my ideal mental state? And mm. understanding what is your ideal mental yeah. state. Yeah. And so for me, it's very precious. I, I'm like, I need to be on that state like 90% of my time. Yeah. And I'm very precious about that. Michael, you, you raised 10 million from Mind Candy in, in 2004. Was that a difficult time to raise money back in, in 2004? Uh, it was pretty tricky, mm. yeah. Yeah, we, um, I think having Firebox and then raising money for a new business made it a bit easier. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the hardest time was um, I think 2008 when we tried to raise money during the financial crisis. Yeah. No one wanted to know then. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, was that true like Perplex City as well when you, you came up with the, the treasure hunt game? W yeah. Was that a little bit ahead of its time? Because that was what, like there was sky riding involved with that. There was people, there was what, 100,000 or 200,000 that was buried somewhere. Yeah, we had, we created this um, game, an alternate reality game. We buried yeah. a treasure worth 100,000 pounds somewhere in the world. Okay. And then we released clues across all sorts of different media. So yeah. we had sky writing, we had, um, God, uh, um, actors, uh, hidden, we hid stuff in classified newspapers. It okay. was crazy. Yeah. Um, Creatively, it was amazing. Commercially, it was disastrous. Mm. And uh, so with the, the little bit of money we had left in the bank, we pivoted massively into um, kids' entertainment. And yeah. that's where Moshi kind of uh, grew from, Moshi Monsters. Moshi Monsters, okay. So how did you, because you went, what, three years with Perplex, and you, nine million later out of the 10 million that you spent. Yeah. So was it a case of, it was real, holy shit, like we've only got a million left. Uh, what, what, any, what, what any actual we, words? Yeah, but, uh, what do we well, do here? probably more serious than that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So like, how, how did you come up with the new game? Like, because everything was being put into Perplex, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. So how did you kind of go from, because there's a lot of money to spend, like yeah. nine million out of the 10, to mm. all of a sudden kind of go, right, 
this is on permanent hold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's one of the hardest things entrepreneurs grapple with. The idea of do you stick with your original idea, continue, yeah. continue forever? Because what if you're that close to finding yeah, yeah. the magic? Yeah. Or do you step away and pivot and try something new? And it's difficult. It's an almost impossible. You have, you know, deep down. So at 4 a.m. in the morning every day, when I'd wake up in a cold sweat, going, "Fucking hell, this, sorry, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is not no working." So, yeah. uh, yeah. No, no out. fucking swearing in this okay, show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, I'd be like, this is not working. But the weird yeah. thing was, we'd raised all this money. We were the poster kids. We were winning awards. Journalists were writing about us. Yeah. I was like, I can't admit this is not working. Was that, was that a big yeah. deal, personally, like an ego oh, thing? that you so just so like... tough. Yeah, really, really tricky. So it was a very stressful board meeting as well to say, I know yeah. you've given yeah, me all yeah. this money, but we're going to do something completely different. And to the credit of my investors, they're like, all right. Give it a go, roll the dice, let's see what happens. Mashi Monsters got up to 60, 60 new users a minute at one stage. We weren't, no, it was about um, uh, 60,000 a day. Um, and right. 80, we got about 80 million users around the world. And it was, yeah, it was wild. That, that must be like incredible when you went from like one sale a week with a fax machine <laughs> yeah. to, to 60,000. Yeah. Like, it was it was head spinning. It, yeah. it was like being inside a, a washing machine, basically, because okay. I've never seen growth quite like it. We had the number one kids magazine, the number one DS game. We had a movie with Universal. We had a music album. Um, there was a lot going on. Two hundred and twenty yeah, yeah. employees. It was. Uh, Here, wild. Here's something that's quite interesting. So when, when people have a have a business, right? And some people say be laser focused. If an op and if an opportunity comes, just stay focused on your goal and what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the music and the movie and the books and everything else that came, was, was that something you planned or did you just say, fuck it, if that comes, we're just gonna go with that and we're just gonna go with I everything? Mean, we had this big grand vision. We wanted to create the next kind of um, Disney. Okay. So we knew vaguely where we were heading. Yeah. But I think the key with every business is to start and do one thing insanely well. Just mm. even if it's pretty small and niche, just nail the hell out of that. And then once you've done that, then you can start going into adjacent areas. But if you try and do everything and chase every shiny object, yeah. you, you end up yeah. in pieces. Well, well, here's a question for both of you, right? Because we've all seen that picture. You know, we see the guy with the pickaxe and he's going down and then he quits at the last inch and behind the inch was the, 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 the jewels. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've also heard the phrase, your first loss is the cheapest, right? You've both, I hate to use the word fail, but you've both failed in something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What, like, so how, as we said, like it's difficult for an entrepreneur to know when to give up and when to continue. So like, how do you know? Like, I know it's not one that you can answer easily, yeah. but like, how do you know when to quit and how do you know when to keep going and find the jewel? It, I, I, I think it's, uh, you keep going as, as much as your passion is driving you. Yeah. It's like you have to be, you know, that drive. You need to wake up every day and say, I think that's going to make it. I don't know if it's mm. about the same with you, but it's, yeah, it's a gut, it's a gut thing. Mm, yeah. And it's like, I believe in that and my team believes in that and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen, right? Yeah. And if that magic kind of stops, I think it's kind of a universal <laughs> sign that, wait a minute, okay. if you're in doubt, likelihood you might not be giving your, your full yeah. self anymore yeah, to yeah, that yeah. thing. That, that, gut, moment, that gut instinct yeah. is so yeah. important. The subconscious is amazing and yeah. most of us don't listen to it. We pick up so much more information subconsciously than we do consciously. And yeah. that is your gut speaking to you and it, it's, it, you should be listening to it. At the moment, Boston Studios is in the top 1% startups in the UK with annual revenue, is, is yeah, that right? That's right. What's it like at this stage running a company or, or being a co-founder of a company that, that's at that level? Obviously, the gut's good at the minute, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and that feels great, but what sort of pressure comes with that right now? I, I don't know. I, to me, it's like I only see positives. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, the team is very excited. It's like this, the yeah. vibe in the, in, at the company is like great. Of course, it's uh, we, we're taking on a massive, uh, um, project right now, which is a massive yeah. multiplayer online, World of Drift, and, and we, we're basically creating everything from scratch, and we say that we're co-creating the game mm. with 10,000 people, there are 10,000 10, gamers and influencers and etc. And so I, I, I think everyone's very pumped. Yeah. So I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, there's that feeling, oh my God, we're going to really make that big as we wish yeah. we, we can do. Are you but sleeping? 
I am sleeping. Good. Okay, all right. I am <laughs> sleeping. Um, yes. <laughs> you, you've doubled in size in the past six months. Yeah. That kind of brings its own problems as well, does it? Yeah, the, we, we were very actually we worked we work very closely with our, with our management team right now yeah. uh, to keep the culture and to so we, we did all this exercise of you know what are our values and you know what is our big big vision big mission yeah. uh, to make sure that not only us know it but you know everyone yeah. who enters Boston can get it immediately and get and hit the right uh, a good ground, friend of ours is running a ground, company that's ground hiring. <laughs> serious growth at the moment and yeah he said, there's just people who want to work in a startup there's people who want to play ping pong like three hours a day and he's like we're not at that stage now we have we have board we've investors stop playing ping pong and it's it's now it's now more serious so no we don't uh, we don't do serious i think that's good <laughs> i mean we're very serious about the business right and yeah, we're yeah. very deliberate about everything we do so um the way that we we make games is through game jam so we we look at uh, I, don't, I don't know if you, if you guys probably researched on that. So uh, we have this we researched process everything <laughs> of uh, we know of you better than you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of game jamming once a month. So we stop, we stop the whole company for two days, and they uh, they have to work on a new game. Okay. Uh, and and organize themselves however they want. Uh, and there are only two rules. One rule is that you cannot do on your own, so you have to persuade someone else that your idea is better than theirs. Oh, nice. Uh, and the second a rule... A lot of fighting in the office. Uh, <laughs> a lot of... Yeah. Well, actually, a lot of collaboration. And um, and then at the end of the second day, it needs to be playable, at least the core part of the game, right? Yeah. And that's how we have been populating our, our roadmap. So I think we, we, we say that we're trying to create this creative machine. Yeah. I hate the word machine, but it's like it, it's this creative machine that we always coming up with something crazy, something new and something mm. that the team loves doing. Michael, so. you, you've raised one, you raised 1.5 million for Calm. And we see that sometimes with, we've read that you, you're a wealthy man and, yeah. and you probably, We've read Why, that. Is that, is that true? Yeah. I, I couldn't possibly come but, up. But 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 <laughs> could you put the 1.5 million in yourself? And if you could have, why did you choose going for for investors? Um, well, we I, at the very start um, we bought the domain name calm.com, yeah. which was uh, more expensive than hotbox.co.uk. Well, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How much was calm? It was it was a six figure sum. It was, really? was yeah. it really? a reasonable amount of money. Who, who yeah. had it originally? Uh, it was some guy who lived in Sheffield that had owned it for for years. What? And uh, what's we just, he driving now? <laughs> <laughs> Probably something quite nice. But um, did he know it was you who was trying to buy it? Well, uh, no, we okay. did it anonymously. But um, we just felt we, we felt there was a huge opportunity to build something exciting in that particular space, and just yeah. felt starting with a domain as strong and recognizable as that. You know, we wanted to build a multi-billion dollar business and yeah, yeah, it felt yeah. like a small price to pay to to kind of have that key part of the brand. Yeah. So uh, You don't want we, dashes or underscores no, or... No, yeah. exactly. Is it important to have, like, the name? Because, like, I people mean, are saying yes, people are saying no. I think the value of a, a dot .com is, is coming down, obviously, yeah, in, yeah. in the age of mobile and elsewhere. But we, we thought it would just be an one important part of the overall picture. So it's not vital, but it we was nice to have. We bought .ie there the other oh, day. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. If you do want to oh, buy it. Oh, did you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll do a deal afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it came to Calm, right, yeah. we, we were reading that it was all, a, a lot of stress had come from Mind Candy and I won't say Firebox or any of those, right? But is that where it came from or did you just see a niche in the market or were you suffering from stress yourself and you got into relaxation, you became calm, you said, you know, it'd be a good idea. You know, yeah. like, where did it come from? Well, Moshi, as we were talking about earlier, grew like that. It was yeah. an insane ride. And then almost overnight, it came down just as, yeah. as sharply. The kids' entertainment space is incredibly kids fast are. moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they move on to the next thing. And, and we didn't handle the transition from web to, to mobile as, okay. as well as we could. It's very tough completely different set of economics. So a long story, say we had to, the business completely changed. Very stressful time for everyone involved, sleepless nights, etc. And during that period, I, I discovered meditation. And my initial thoughts were, this is weird. <laughs> um, I, thought, I thought it was religious. I thought I'd have to get dressed up in weird outfits. Weirder than I normally like, wear. Like this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You, you so, so <laughs> I'm so relaxed. There's so much baggage with it. And But my buddy, um, Alex Chu, who I set right. the business up with, had been meditating for many years. And what, what turned me on to it, the light bulb moment, was reading the research, realizing the, the neuroscience behind it. Uh, and, uh, and then we realized, you know, this is an amazingly valuable 
skill that we can make accessible and simple and, mm. and build yeah. a great business around. Do you use it yourself? I, I know do. you're going to say yes. I right? do. Every morning in the Calm office, we, we meditate as a team. Okay. And uh, Oh, I did read that, actually. Yeah, it's a great, that, yeah. great way to start the day. Yeah. So yeah. you just get out. How many in the office? Uh, there's In the whole company, there's about 30 people. So, so everyone just comes into the one room and meditates? No, it's optional. Um, okay. Some people do, some people don't, but I think it's, uh, yeah. Really is, it, is Calm something for people who are beginning, or is it, because you're doing it a long time, you can obviously meditate when you want, and you don't need training for it, but is Calm something if people meditate, they can, they can download the app and use it? It's a really easy way to, to get into it. So mm. it's, yeah. it's, it's basic, but then we offer a lot more than just meditation. So we're very passionate about mental health yeah. and mental fitness. And we're seeing this incredible shift in society yeah. very quickly over the last few years. Mental health used to be something no one talked about. Yeah. It was this weird thing in yeah, the shadows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For God's sake, you know, we, if you have a body, you have physical health. If you've got a mind, you've got mental health. Yeah. And why do we not treat our minds with the same respect and care that we do our physical bodies? Yeah. So that shift, I think, has helped Calm and other businesses grow so quickly. You know, we have 26 million downloads. We won App of the Year last year. We are I, App of the Year last year. Yeah, okay. Oh, well yeah, yeah. So, so it's, and it's profitable, and it's it's an amazing business. So we're able to read up so much on both of you guys, right? But like, tell us something that people don't know and can't read. Like, like, what's a typical day for you? Like, what time do you wake up in the morning? What do you have for breakfast? You know, after <laughs> after. Does, does, anyone, does anyone really want to know that? Yeah, yeah everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love flakes. I love lime yogurt. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one here knew that. <laughs> yeah. I, know. Um, I, I think the morning is very important. There's this great book that just came out called Morning Routines. Don't know if anyone knows the website. Morning Routines. Interview. Morning Routines. Okay. The morning is your foundation for the rest of the day. And I always used to, like a lot of people, wake up and reach for my phone. Something yeah. like 60% of people start their day in bed with their phone. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's so unhealthy. And so what I do now is I don't turn my phone on. I, don't, I have it on airplane mode until I go to a coffee shop. And having that space to daydream and think and, mm. and You're just obviously single then, are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. 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 <laughs> oh sorry, I didn't get the message. <laughs> um, but uh but yeah, so so that's uh, I think a, a, a good way to start the day. Yeah. Graham actually you not that I know this, don't ask me how I do know it, but Graham <laughs> sleeps with his phone under his pillow oh. while it's plugged in. Oh, that can't be good. Why you know? did you do that? Why? Because it's so I can just grab it when it's Oh no. Because these people so tweet us and have to write back. It's for, the, it's for the audience. That's why I do it. It's really why I do it. See, what about you I though? Like, you're, you're sleeping again now. So I'm that's good. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what did you change? Because obviously like, it got drastic and you yeah. went right enough is enough. But now you're back in, you've raised more money, right? So I'm sure, and you're, you've doubled in size in six yeah. months. So I'm sure things are getting stressful again. Yeah. How do you deal with it now? <laughs> Have you downloaded the app? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that just downstairs? Uh, no. <laughs> just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I, I, I have, I have a little bit of a ritual in the morning as well. Okay. So I, I do, I do eggs. So basically, that's my breakfast. So I eat eggs every day in the morning. Okay. Uh, I also have my moments now. On the last couple of months, I haven't been exercising, but I was doing like three times per week at least in the morning, mm. running on the treadmill. Okay. And also contemporary dance every Monday. And also really? which? Sorry? Contemporary dance. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I love dancing, and contemporary dance is amazing because it's like fast ballet and it's nice. It's yeah. like I'm just dealing with my body and nothing else. So those kind of things. So exercise actually yeah. puts me back into the present. Okay. That's the big and recurring good food team. as well, right? Huge. With all our guests. Yeah. Tom from Monzo was on uh, on last month's show, and he said, "I do not get to the office before 10 a.m. because I fucking hate mornings, and I just yeah. can't oh, do I don't, mornings." Oh, I don't get up before 10 either. It's like really? No, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I like my people mornings. have this kind yeah, of 5 a.m. hustle yeah. harder. <laughs> like, is this before no, or after I, you raise money? No, look, look I, I work <laughs> I work until 9, 10 p.m. But it's like, okay, don't right. don't get me out of my bed before before seven. Yeah, it's like but no way. The exercise thing, because because Tom said he doesn't. We asked him, does he splash out on things? And he said, no, the only thing I spend money on is a personal trainer. Mm. And every morning he just, goes, it just clears my mind, get exercise in, and then I get to the office and I can think. He's obviously doing something right. You guys are obviously doing something right. You are both gamers, right? So myself and Graham, we always do something at the end of all the shows that we do. So we decided we'd come up with a game for you two. Uh -oh. right? Yeah, Michael's like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. you, you've heard of Pictionary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Well, myself and Graham have one called Entrepictionary. All right. So we used to have guests in the ba in the van in the studio, and they'd have to draw what it is they do, and another entrepreneur would have to guess what it is they do. So what we're going to do is we've got a board, 
we're going to get you guys both to draw, right? But we're going to oh need two God, volunteers. <laughs> Can we get two volunteers? Can we get two people? Audience, Luke? Yeah? Luke? Anybody else? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Come okay. on up. All right. Right? Now, they're taking old photo. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a card each, right? Now, don't, don't let these guys see it. So, Roberta, that's you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Michael, that's you. Right. Don't let anyone see that just yet. Do you have the pens there? You yep. do. Right. So, right, Michael, you choose. Who do you want to team up with? <laughs> Who's good at guessing? Goodness me. Um, <laughs> you look very you can't creative, volunteer so. and say yeah. not me. Right. Yeah. Should we get a mic? Um, yeah, like sorry, we need a mic. We need a mic. mic. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Oh, all right. oh yeah, well, there we one. go. Nice. Right, OK. Get a mic over here. Do I, okay, do I have to draw all this? I yeah. Give that mic. And, and, and you have one you, minute, 30 you seconds. You literally, yeah. What? All the way around, turn it up. Is there, is there like a category? No, there's not. Oh, okay. So basically, sorry, I'm in the way of the camera. Yeah. Can bring that around a little All right. Bit? So you have what 90, 90 seconds to try and guess as many of these businesses hey, that you Michael draws as you can. Is that in the way the camera? Here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let me get the stopwatch ready. One second there. Okay. Stopwatch. So you're going to have a minute thirty okay. to do as many of those as you can. Yeah. All right. Starting from the first. Yeah. And you have to guess what it is what he's drawing. Okay, you can do, you can draw them, but you can't write what they are. Got it. Got okay. It. All, All right. right. All right. You ready to go? Okay. You ready yeah. to go? Three, you need two. To keep guessing. All right. All right. Okay. Go. Go. <laughs> TV. What's TV. the company? Uh, oh gosh. Well, Facebook. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is an interesting one. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. no. Okay. Close. Oh gosh. Uh, okay. Nike. Okay. Well, go on, Nike. Just do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. Nike. Nike. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're on thirty seconds. Beer. Uh, pint. Pint. Yeah. 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 Someone shout it. Someone shout it. Yeah. 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 You got it. Okay. We're on fifty seconds. Cube. GameCube. Uh, oh gosh, a uh, bowl, spoon box. <laughs> cereal, a brand of cereal. Uh, special K? Uh, Who makes Special K? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Kellogg, she got it. Okay, uh, we're on a minute 10. Last one, is it? Oh, the oh. Snapchat. Yep. Okay, one more, one more, quick. Last one. A minute 15. Uh, t t t t yes, yes. Oh my that's God. it, done. Oh. Big round of applause. A minute 18. <laughs> a minute 18. Nice. <laughs> this, this, this right here was Jurex, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a tough, yeah, that's yeah, a tough yeah. one. I was there, I hope, I was there when he's taking the safe option. Yeah, right, I was okay. like, I hope that's not the scale. Yeah. Okay, so next up, Roberta, Luke, you ready? Okay, do you have your list? I have my list. You have yeah. your list. Okay, ready? All right. Go. Go. Apple? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Four seasons. McDonald's. Wow. Have you played this before? Yeah. Can you see that card? Disney. Disney. Yeah. We're on 15 Thank seconds. You. Sorry, Disney, Michael. Disney, no? It's not Disney. It is, yeah. It is Disney. Why are you yeah. still drawing? There's another one. Oh, there's another one. Snapchat, Snapchat, Snapchat. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Mushy Monsters! Oh! oh. <laughs> hey, 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 okay, 30 seconds. Um, uh, oh gosh. Uh, Starbucks. Uh, what? D. Uh, 40 seconds. What's this? Uh, oh gosh. I don't even know what this is. Washing machines. No? <laughs> What's that? I don't know. It's an anchor. Come on, Luke. Uh, come on. Uh, da, da. Nearly. Nearly. Thank God you're not an artist. Um, <laughs> next. Go on to the okay, next one. Go on to the next one. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Last one. We're on a minute. Snapchat. Oh, uh, what's that game called? Uh, Pac Man. Pac Man. Uh, uh, Pac -Man. Can, I, can I write it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a difficult okay. one, so you can put uh, in a letter if you want. Can I? We've got yeah. 10 seconds there's left. A K, there's a K. K. And what a, you eat when you're hungover? There's a, there's a thing he used to eat. <laughs> Chicken? If, if it's not, if it's not this, 
Chicken. Uh, Someone said KFC. Bug yeah, KFC. 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 Oh, oh, got it. That's it. it. Who's that? This, oh. this here wasn't the washing machine, it was Instagram. Instagram. What you Instagram. Like? Instagram. <laughs> you were close. Oh. You were close. You were close. Very, very close. Very close. Very close. All right, nice. look. Guys, nice so look. <laughs> you're both you're both winners. We just put it that way. Was that a draw? You're both it winners. Was. Well, we're, oh, what you, Dan? Nice, you got nice a minute 18. A minute 18, so we'll have to give it to Michael, unfortunately. Oh. Now, don't, I, lose I'm any, happy with the don't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> yeah, please. Do. Don't lose any sleep please over it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. We know you thank two you. are extremely busy. Yeah. You flew over from Germany just to come on the show. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> you came over from San Francisco to come Appreciate on the show. Appreciate it. Especially. You know, Michael, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're even going to download Cam after this. We will. We'll Absolutely. Yeah. That's two yeah. new yeah. users. That as well, we already have and that, that. Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. And we're going to buy some 3D jewellery as well. All right. Yes. Especially that one. A massive thank you to Jobbio, Smith & Williamson, and obviously Oracle Ness. We thank you so much for watching. Tune in next yeah. one, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, there goes the card. Thank you, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for coming. So Appreciate much. it. Cheers.